Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com slash wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hello everybody, Joe Fernandez here again, and I'll be going through step 2 of 3 steps to Gladiator as a Frost Death Knight. Step 2 involves preparing for PvP, which involves two important topics. These topics are being able to min-max your damage, and making the most of your crowd control abilities. Min-maxing your damage is an easy yet very effective part of every DPS player in an arena game. It's an important feat of strength as being able to do the most damage will result in easier win conditions. It's even more important for Frost Death Knights as it's the core feat of strength to them, being able to outcleave and out DPS most players in the arena. Frost Death Knights are known to win damage meters, especially in melee cleave showdowns or when you can constantly hit two targets. When it comes to your basic rotation, it will look like the following. Number one, Frost Fever to keep diseases up and delirium up. Number two, Chains of Ice to snare them if needed. Number three, Remorseless Winter. Number four, to obliterate, then use Ryan proc as soon as it procs from obliterates. If you don't get a proc, then continue obliterating until you get a Ryan proc. Number five, if at full runic power or close to full, then use death strike. One big thing to note, which will depend if you're being targeted or not, is taking into consideration using death strike. Death strike is an absurdly powerful ability at giving you increased self healing. You'll most likely be using this in place of Frost Strike whilst you're being targeted in order to increase your self survival and give yourself a much easier time to stay alive. You only want to prioritize Frost Strike when not taking damage and wanting to achieve maximum DPS. Knowing your burst rotation is just as important as knowing your basic rotation. You'll want to use this when going for kills or wanting to force defensive cooldowns in order to sway the chances of winning in your team's favor. Luckily for Frost Death Knight, your burst is exactly the same rotation as your normal rotation, apart from incorporating Pillar of Frost or Empower Rune Weapon just before you deal your damage. You ideally want to burst when you can hit more than one target as you deal immense cleave damage and you have a low cooldown on your Pillar of Frost. If you can only burst one target down, then you may want to wait for crowd control on healers or making offensive setups with grips into stuns on them. This is because you may not get enough pressure to warrant cooldowns otherwise. When dealing cleave burst damage, you want to use Chill Streak with Pillar of Frost ideally together, bearing in mind you must have two targets within five yards of each other so that your Chill Streak can bounce, dealing maximum damage. These cooldowns also line up relatively well with each other, making it easy to line up when wanting to burst. If you're playing with Breath of Syndragosa, you want to use it with Pillar of Frost and Empower Rune Weapon for maximum pressure. You'll also be using your normal rotation when these cooldowns are activated, apart from not having Globals to use Death Strike or Frost Strike. There's no real niche uses with Frost Death Knight apart from being careful with using Chill Streak. Chill Streak will only bounce with targets within 5 yard range of each other, which is a very small radius. The best way to get this off is by using Death Grip into an AoE stun, such as Chaos Nova or Leg Sweep, to ensure that your Chill Streak bounces between targets, creating a ton of pressure. Now that you know how to deal damage properly, it's time to learn how to make the most of your crowd control. Your main crowd control abilities as a Frost Death Knight are the following. Death Grip, Blinding Sleet, Chains of Ice, and Death Chill. Death Grip is quite a versatile spell that can have a few different uses. The most recognized way is to use if offensively, which is with a Windwalker as well as a Demon Hunter. Using Grip into Leg Sweep or Chaos Nova is an important mechanic in order to get Chill Streak off, thus creating a ton of pressure. It's typical to usually Death Grip enemy healers into AoE stuns in order to generate a ton of pressure. 
Swapsy Death Grips Looney here into a Chaos Nova by Raikou, landing on Blizzo and Looney. This forces both of them to use their trinkets out of it, which puts Method Black in an early advantage. On the other side of the spectrum, you can use Death Grip defensively to peel for your team. Gripping enemy melee and putting them in Chains of Ice will reduce their pressure significantly making it difficult for them to reconnect to your partner unless they use a mobility cooldown. In this situation, Trill is kiting for his life whilst Method Black are gunning him down. Wes tries to reconnect by shadow stepping onto Trill. Mez seeing this knows he can peel it. So he does so by death gripping him and putting him in a chains of ice. This way, Trill can get more breathing room and Method Orange can stabilize. You can also use death grip as an interrupt for big casts like Greater Pyro, Chaos Bolt, or important crowd control spells to avoid big damage or scary offensive setups from the enemy team. Sometimes stopping crowd control is more important than the damage, especially against mages where the crowd control itself could kill your team more so than the damage. Blinding Sleet is an AoE crowd control ability that could also be used in different ways. It can be used to grip healers on top of their DPS partners, allowing you to double or triple Blinding Sleet them in order to initiate a setup with your team and have longer crowd control on the enemy healer. Here we can see a big opener coming from Method Black, so Mez decides he wants to peel this opener as much as possible. He grips Enchants into a triple blinding sleet on the entire team. Trill follows this up with a le triple leg sweep, which sets up an excellent offensive go for them. It can also be used as a tool allowing your DPS partners to make a setup off from. For instance, a demon hunter can mana burn off a blinding sleet on enemy healers. Here we see Swapsy and Raikou do this perfectly. Swapsy grips Looney into a blinding seat whilst Raikou uses a mana rift. This is very effective as in fact Looney decides he wants to divine shield out of it in order to avoid being mana burn. It's mainly popular to use stuns off of blinding sleet to ensure a nice offensive setup, catch a druid's out of form or avoiding partners from pre-using defensive cooldowns. Lastly but not least, Blinding Sleet can be great for defensive peels, especially against teams going all out on your healer. It stops multiple nearby enemies in their path, and if they are playing human with Relentless, those classes can't get out of it, ensuring your partner's safety. In this example, we see Method Black being put in a triple leg sweep, whilst Mez has very strong offensive cooldowns up, which would deal a lot of pressure. Swapsy knowing this, then wants to peel for his team, so he grips in Seedu and lands a beautiful triple Blinding Sleet. This buys Chaz time to heal up his team and keep them from harm thanks to the defensive blinding sleet from Swapsy. Now Chains of Ice is technically a snare, but due to its immense power, it becomes a great form of crowd control against all targets, especially melee DPS. Its standard use is great, keeping up Chains of Ice on enemies so you can stick on your targets. Here, in this example, we can see Samayam put into a Chains of Ice from Swapsy making him unable to get out of melee range of Method Black. The only time Samayam can kite him is when Seedu gives him a Blessing of Freedom. Chains of Ice is a powerful tool for heavily snaring enemy players, allowing you to kite whoever you want simply due to moving faster than them. They will only be able to catch you if they have an equal snare or if they use mobility cooldowns to reconnect. Waz tries to connect by shadow stepping onto Trill. Mez seeing this knows he can peel it, so he does so by death gripping him and putting him in a chains of ice. This way Trill can get more breathing room and Method Orange can stabilize. Here is another example where Swapsy sneaks in a chains of ice on Blizzo whilst Chaz is attempting to kite him. As you can see it heavily peels Blizzo, forcing his escape artist in order for him to connect again as quick as possible. It's also effective against casters as they have a hard time repositioning and connecting if you run away line of sighting them. Admittedly, you won't play with Death Chill often, but when you do, it's important to be effective with it as it can be a big lifesaver in the situations where you take it. You can root with a Remorseless Winter or multiple Chains of Ice. Using a Chains of Ice during a Chains of Ice debuff will root them, but remove the Chains of Ice snare, so be careful with using it. Alright, so that's everything on the second of the three steps to Gladiator as a Frost Death Knight. Make sure to tune in for the third and final step and plus skill this guide if it helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.